Hi again guys, I'm back for another video. When we left off with our last video, we'd just done the Escape from Reknor Dungeon and the, I think it's called the Ancient Elven Crypt. It might not be a crypt now that I think about it. I think that might be a different dungeon, but um, we're going to get right back into it exactly where we left off, which was in this uh, room, in the first room in the east, where we have a face-off between two boss characters. This guy, I think he's in a Norathel, judging by his um, his current sustainable abilities. So I'll do it. Little, I'll take a little bit of extra damage when I hit him. He does darkness and light damage, but he's not too hard to beat. Usually, I never have trouble with this guy. His drops aren't good. I mean, he is a full fledged boss enemy, but his drops never seem to be all that great. And she tells us that they have a little civilization here and blah blah blah. But she is painfully in the way right now. I will just dig a tunnel around her, I guess. Oh my god, did she get killed? I didn't even know that could happen. Wow, that that should be interesting. Well, we didn't kill her, so hopefully that means we won't get punished for it. But for some reason, she gave us experience when she died? I don't understand that one, but I'm not going to pass on it. A level's a level. And now we can start up leveling our, our dexterity, which has been kind of lagging behind, as, you know, we haven't put any points in it at all. And we have two class points and two generic points. We'll put those into True Grit, and let's see what we should do with these generics. I would like to get armor training maxed out, and then after that we can worry about other stuff. Sometimes I forget about how fast Step Up makes us. Now, this cave is the Unremarkable Cave, and it's an unremarkable cave as it turns out. Most of the enemies here are just the random mis mishmash, so there doesn't seem to be a dominant enemy type to be found. Lots of animal type enemies. You can get orcs in here, skeletons, lots of undead. They're a little bit lower level than the enemies we fought in the elven ruins with all the mummies. We're just going to call it that mummy place. So they're, they're easier than the enemies in the mummy place, in theory. I've actually had deaths in here though, and I've never died in that other place. At least not since I first started playing and I accidentally blundered in there. Something to note about those really high level places like the Ancient Elven Ruins is that if you can sneak in there and get lucky with a drop right next to the door, you can get some really nice items without having to put any for any forth any real effort to get them, which is pretty pretty acceptable in my opinion. Ooh, ouch. Are we still wearing the feather steel? We are having some fatigue problems. What does that set my fatigue to? Plus 30. What's the fatigue on that other shield? Wow, that's the disadvantage to Titanic. I just don't think we can wear Titanic and um, maintain our stamina regen. It just doesn't seem to be a pop. A pop it does, just doesn't seem to be possible, so um, we're just going to take it off. I'm getting enough armor hardiness from leveling up armor training. A nice thing that's coming in the next patch, uh, everybody's going to start with less generics to compensate for it, so, I mean, short term it's going to hurt at, at, you know, at character creation, but um, armor training is getting changed to a 5-point talent from a 10-point, which is, is absolutely amazing. It's going to have the exact same benefit, but... Uh, it's going to cost half as many talent points to max out, so it'll give characters like Bulwarks who need to max that tree a lot more generic point freedom, especially in the late game when they really need to have that maxed. Since they'll be able to get it, you know, out of the way early, or they'll be able to save the last couple of points till late. 
It'll also allow massive armor at three points instead of four, but the strength requirement's been upped a little bit. If anything, it just brings it in line with the other mastery talents. Um, the weapon mastery talents and combat accuracy all used to be ten point talents as well, and they scaled at about the same rate. And that was fixed because dual wield characters, um, like Temporal Wardens, who were encouraged to use a one-handed weapon and a sword, could never afford to max bolts. So you'd have things like an arcane blade using daggers at the end game, or a Temporal Warden using daggers at the end game when, when that wasn't how they were intended to be put together. Alright. Cleared out this dungeon, and we have the stuff from the last four of Reknor as well, so our inventory is very full. Um, doesn't look like we found anything good though, so we're just gonna scrap everything. And now we're in the east, the far east, which is a completely different continent from the main one. I don't think you could see part of it from the far east. And it's an interesting little area. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on the, on the overworld map, a lot of new dungeons and stuff like that, and some of them will open up as you do quests in the Far East. But for the most part, none of them are going to be open right away. See, we have a little human patrol here, a Norathil patrol from the Sun Wall, which is the only town in the East. There's only one friendly town here, and that's the Gates of Morning. We'll go into the gates in the morning, and we'll talk to this guy. Oh, excuse me, this lady. I'm sorry. You don't get any special dialogue if she dies. That's interesting. I'll have to keep that in mind and drag enemies into kill her next time. Got to enjoy those free boss experience moments while they while they last. When you talk to uh, the Sun Paladin, you ask them about their, their war with the Orcs, you'll get an actual new talent called Relentless Pursuit. And I will show you what that does. It's not on my bar, but um, here it is. Relentless Pursuit reduces the duration of all active detrimental effects by the appropriate saving throw duration reduction. And as you can see, it reduces those effects by a huge amount. It basically clears all of those effects from you. It's really nice later on when you uh, get some, some CC abilities that you just can't seem to save against or you can't seem to get through your immunities, and you can end them instantly. It's also very useful against enemies with disease, which you'll run into a lot as you go through the prides. We have an artifact rune here, the Rune of Reflection. It's a little late to be finding that. Normally you'll get it off of a boss in Trollmire that sometimes appears, but it just doesn't seem like we got it then. It uh, decided to save itself for when it was least useful. Nothing looking pretty stellar in this uh, this shop. The shop in the Gates of Morning scales a little bit higher than the shops in Last Hope and Zigger, so you can find some really nice stuff here sometimes, but usually it's just going to be crap because by this point you're almost going to be entirely equipped with artifacts and random artifacts. And she has a quest. I will see if I can find him. She wants us to go find her husband in a nearby cave. And this guy's got a quest on how to get back to Majael. And I don't think you have to do this, but I would recommend it. Because there is some stuff back on the mainland that's worth getting. And while we're here, we're just going to go through our inventory and sell everything off. Keep hitting the wrong button. We'll get rid of our tentacle totem. I don't think we're ever going to have another use for it. I don't even know how I have some of these items in my inventory still. This is what I get for saving everything.
Choker of Dread. Choker of Dumb. Alright, that's a little more manageable. So now that we have quests, let's go on to the world map and check out where those quests are located at. The world map in the east is a little different from the, the world map of the main continent in that uh, the, the patrols here consist of friendly patrols from the Gates of Morning and hostile patrols of orcs. The patrols of orcs are kind of like the adventurers. Um, some of them can have class abilities, but they're not nearly as dangerous. They can still kill you pretty quick, though, and they tend to appear in much larger numbers. You'll usually get about six per. And when you get these, if you can, you kind of want to make a beeline for the exit, because there's usually going to be some corruptors and necromancers on these maps that can make it pretty rough. You can also get rares that will spawn in these groups as well, because unlike the adventurer packs, they don't all come out as unique enemies. They uh, are actual from the, the orc template. If you do get ambushed by these and you can't avoid it, kill necromancers and blood mages absolutely first. And deal with any remaining undead like you would with, with any kind of undead group. Prioritize ranged attackers, spellcasters first, that sort of thing, until you get rid of them all. They will disperse after a while, um, after killing the necromancer, but sometimes it can take a little while and it's not worth dying to just hit the wait button, so... And at first, they're going to be really thick on the map. There's a quest that we're going to do here in just a minute that will reduce the amount of them that we'll run into. And it's vital that you do this as soon as you get to the east, because these can be pretty rough. And you want to avoid them if at all possible, because the experience rewards and items you're going to get from these, these ambushes is never going to be that great. I mean, I've found some good artifacts here, but I've also lost a lot of characters to orc patrols, just like I've lost a lot of characters to adventurers. It's never quite as dangerous to tackle them as an adventurer pack, but you can get overwhelmed really easily, especially if you spawn without any trees around you, and wow, there's a lot of orcs on this map. Holy crap. These enemies down here, if you're playing a caster character, these are going to make you hate life. They have an ability called Mana Clash that will burn all of your spellcasting resource and then hit you with damage for it. I'm not sure what, you know, element or whatever, if any, you need to resist that, but it's pretty nasty. And you're going to hate your life the first time it happens to you. Oh, boy. This isn't good. Okay, I've, I've got this. There's no reason to not flee the map if you get or ambush. You just can't escape if you have any deep buffs on you. So if they tag you with flame, don't even try and get off the down panel. Just try and fight your way out. Okay, we're in the orc breeding pits, which is going to be the first dungeon. And we have an Fearscape invasion portal in the opening room. This should be interesting. The orc breeding pits is the first dungeon you do in the east, generally. Uh, when you clear it, once it's done, it will greatly reduce the number of orc patrols on the map, which makes getting around the east much more survivable for characters, especially for characters who are susceptible to the kind of enemies that can spawn in those packs, characters who don't have high mobility, characters who are very reliant on sustains because Mana Clash will end your sustains. If you're about calculated risk, and you should be if you've gotten this far in the game, the best way to ensure that you're taking minimal risks is by doing the orc breeding pit as quickly as possible. I hate these things. Jerks. Ooh. 
We're gonna enter. Now hopefully we don't die. When you enter the Fearscape, this is one of the kind of events that can appear late in the game. Uh, Fearscape portals will open a plane to a basically a, a demon dimension. Demons in, in Tome are aliens <laughs> for some reason. Um, I'm not sure where that idea came from. I'm not saying I don't support it though. It's just an interesting idea that I don't think has been done before. I'm sure someone will prove me wrong on that in the comments. Well, actually, in the Star Trek episode number 678, Jordy and Captain Picard went to the dark dimension of, of Uruk High, and as it turns out, the Christian representation of demons is, in all actuality, uh, an alien race who was visiting the world during biblical times, and they cover it, and it turns out it was all a plot by Q. To clear the event, you just have to run around and kill all the demons. Sometimes there'll be a rare spawn you have to kill or a boss. And once you've killed them all, you can exit. There's a lot of treasure laying around. You can get some good drops in here. You also unlock a prodigy talent um, by going and doing the event, so I recommend you do it if you can. I don't remember what the prodigy does to save my life, though, and we'll find out here in a minute. Oh, we got a nice little item there. I'll see what that does in a minute. And some Vortune Gloves, but I don't think we're going to use them. Let's see what that Unica is. I found it in my last game and I had absolutely no use for it. I'm sure that's going to be the case here as well, but... Chromatic Harness. If it's heavy armor, we might be able to use it. It's heavy. Oh, it's for Wormix. If I was a Wormix, this would be really nice, but I'm not. It's got stun and freeze immunity, blindness immunity, knockback immunity, whole bunch of resistances, nice stats. Um, damn, that that might might be worth it. I, I lose a lot of arm. Fuck it, I'm gonna wear that. That's really nice. That's a lot of resistances. Twenty percent physical resist. Damn, that'll make up for the armor. I think. I don't lose that much armor anyway. The orc breeding pits is exactly as it implies. It's filled with orc children. We have orc child, orc baby. Crawling on all fours, this green-skinned creature is far from cute, with vicious little sharp teeth and nails and mucusy slime still sticking to its skin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to beat that orc baby to death with a shield. And we have some full-grown orcs just laying around. And there's a lot of little blore bits in here that are that will explain what exactly is going on. Young Orc. The young Orc is almost fully formed, with hard muscles prominently visible beneath its thick skin. Whilst it has lost some of the wild energy of its younger siblings, you can see the gleams of intelligence and cold calculation behind its dark eyes. Uh, the, the story of the Orc breeding pits is really interesting. I'm, again, I'm not going to spoil it, but um, when you get here, make sure you read all the lore bits. They basically explain what happened to the orcs after they were chased out of the, the main continent and how they managed to get back into power. And it's it's kind of dark, and maybe it makes you feel a little bit less bad about running around killing babies and, and horrible, misshapen horrors. We'll get onto the horrible, misshapen horrors when we run into one, but there's sure to be one around here somewhere. Oh, ow. These guys are kind of nasty. That hurt for a minute. Here we go. The grossest thing in the game. Orc Mother. This giant bloated form towers above you. Mucus and slime ooze from every orifice, dripping onto the cavern floor. Orc children fight over the right to feed from her distended teats, whilst small babies are regularly pushed out from her many pulsating vulvas. The sight and smell make you wretch. Thank you for that, Dark God. We are all enriched.
the existence of many vagina to orc mothers is is man, I don't know how I could have lived without that one. Now, the remaining floors after the first aren't nearly as large. They get a lot smaller and a lot more hectic and compact. There's about as many enemies in the lower floors, but there's about a quarter as much floor space, so... You can get into dangerous areas, but they're cramped enough that it's harder to get surrounded. Just about done with this floor. Okay, let's see. If we got anything good. Doesn't look like. Alright, we'll just move on to the next floor then. As you can see, much, much tighter floors. A lot thicker spawns of enemies. Oh, we have a rare baby! They've got overkills. They're probably a corruptor. And they're dead. The only adorable orc baby is a dead orc baby. having a lot of trouble in here, mostly because my armor is through the roof. Most of the enemies in the orc breeding pits do physical damage. Um, you'll get a little bit of elemental here and there, especially from the rares, but for the most part it's almost entirely physical combatants, so characters with high armor will have a really easy time here. Casters probably will too, just because they can AoE down huge groups of enemies at a time. Most of the enemies aren't very rough. The orc babies and the orc children are orc babies and orc children, you shouldn't have a hard time with them. And as far as elite enemies go, the Orc Mothers are probably the elite, easiest elite you're going to run into. They don't have a lot of attacks, they mostly just spawn Orc Babies. Broken Hourglass. Let's see. Raises will, temporal resistance, and lowers spell cooldowns. That is an item that is intended for chronomancers and temporal wardens. Okay, nothing here we really want to keep, I don't think. So let's move on to the next floor and see what we find there. Ouch. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh. Wow. Killed by a corruptor. They get really rough at this point in the game and it looks like that was just enough to uh to put us over the edge. So that concludes this video and this part of the video series. I guess we will come back with another character. I'm planning on going to try one of the other classes, possibly an Arcane Blade or something like that in the next video series. But this is it for our beginner's intro, playing a Dwarf Bulwark. We managed to get to the Far East and almost to the end of the Orc Breeding Pits. I would like to show you the end, but it just doesn't look like I survived to do so. so Thanks for watching. Keep an eye out. I'll have more videos up probably sometime in the next week, if not today or tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye.